Yes. What do I hate about selling jewelry? All right, hate might be a little bit of a strong word, but what do I struggle with when I sell jewelry or with the whole process of sourcing, finding everything about selling jewelry? What is it that I struggle with? Hi there, my name is Margaret. Welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. I am a reselling homeschooling mom that flips things on eBay and Etsy and Mercari and Poshmark and wherever else I can sell things to help support my family. I'd like to welcome you to my channel. I make videos all about selling jewelry amongst other things. And if you're interested in learning how to make money by selling things online, then go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when I put out new videos. I want to hear from you. If you have started selling jewelry or if you're hesitating selling jewelry because of this very thing, what is your biggest challenge when it comes to selling jewelry? I want to hear from you. So we all know the joys of je selling jewelry, or we think we know the money in it, the, the, the treasure hunt, the thrill of the hunt, all of that fun stuff. But there are definitely some areas that are hurdles when it comes to selling jewelry. And I'm gonna share some of mine. Now, with anything, I completely believe that you can overcome anything that you have a challenge with just by doing research and educating yourself. So I know that any of these things that I have or do still struggle with are things that I can overcome by just going onto the internet and learning all about them and trying to improve my selling and all of that. So some of these are things that I have overcome and some of them are still things that I struggle with. So let's get started. The first one has to do with photographing. Now I still struggle when it comes to photographing reflective pieces. I'm going to show you a couple of scarf clips that I've recently been trying to get good photographs of. But when they're silver and gold and really reflective, it's super hard to get a good picture of them without getting yourself in the reflection or the side of the tent that you're using. It's really challenging. And I did a video a few days ago where I was showing kind of my technique of how I finally get to the point where I can get a good photograph of something that's reflective. But it, there, I know there's a better way. And I know that it's something that I just have to, to dive deeper into because I know there's a better way. The next thing that I struggle with when it comes to selling jewelry is taking photographs of really long necklaces. I always end up just kind of winding them around in a circle because I don't have a mannequin that I can drape a really long necklace on. And then also when it comes to that, like if you're trying to see a picture of a, the full length of a necklace on a mannequin, then it's so far away that it's hard to get the details of, I mean, I struggle with that. So I think that that's another area. So I hesitate. I hesitate selling and listing longer necklaces for that very reason because I struggle getting a good picture of them. Next, these are three that are just pet peeves of mine. One are fishing wire necklaces that have either like fishing wire or just like that plastic like wire and they just they bend and they crimp and they tangle and they're just like so frustrating and it's hard like say you finally find one that's in good shape and you want to try to sell it then trying to store it so that it's not getting crimped and crinkled up it's just ugh, they're such a nightmare I can't I, they just really really bother me <laughs> and I know there's a way I could like get hooks on the wall and hang them if I wanted to if it meant that much to me I suppose that's what I would do Another big pet peeve of mine are tangles. And I know in a lot of my jewelry unboxings, I go ahead and I leave the tang detangling in, but it is something I do not enjoy. I know there are people that really get into the detangling. It's really kind of like a zen moment. But man, this is why I have voiceover. <laughs> I mean, this or either a voiceover or music over, and I speed it up because sometimes it takes me five, 10 minutes to detangle some things. And you'll either hear me fussing at the jewelry or goodness knows what else. So I just blare music on my end and then I speed it up so that y'all don't have to listen to me like going, here's a bit of the tangles. Yeah. <laughs> now I know there are tricks for detangling as far as, especially as change, using baby powder, things like that. But when I'm in the middle of a video, it's kind of 
I can't I can't just go do that while I'm showing you the jewelry so yeah there are there are tricks to detangling getting a, a fine pin getting baby powder to kind of shake things around those are some some good ways to to detangle if you're at home and trying to do that on your own and then another it's just a gross is I don't like dirty tassels okay you guys know <laughs> I'm weird I'm weird about tassels feathers Yarn like fabric in, in jewelry. I don't know. It's just the tactile thing and things that can get gross and dirty. Just like ugh, like things that that I can't clean easily. I I just can't. I don't like. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I like a sassy tassel. I like a classy tassel. But a dirty tassel, no, no. And I have had some of y'all share with me how to clean dirty tassels, but it's just for me. I'd rather just put them in a lot and let somebody else go for it. <laughs> So the third thing that is more like a struggle than something I hate, it's something I struggle with inside myself, is the whole getting out of my own head when it comes to jewelry and what I think is good and what I think will sell. Because there are all kinds of people in this world and if you're only looking at jewelry, and I am totally guilty of this, looking at jewelry and going, I like that, I think that's what I want to sell. I don't like that, I'm not going to try to sell that that can really limit what kind of sales you get. Now, that being said, I think if you're just starting out, that's a great place to start by looking at jewelry and saying, I would pay for that. Okay, I'll sell that. And and then expanding from there. But I should know better. I'm How long have I been doing this? And I still sometimes look at jewelry and go, no. Now, not the weird, like weird, funky, crazy stuff. I love it. But just stuff that's like not my style. You know, like I don't wear, I mean, not to get, I'm not down on anybody else, but like the tassels, I can't. <laughs> as much as I like finding sassy tassels or classy tassels, personally, I don't wear tassels. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the, I don't know. I just don't. But they look great on other people. So like that, like if I looked, if I just took all tassels and said, I don't like tassels, I'm not selling them. I would be missing a huge swath of the population of people who love wearing tassels, right? They're sassy. They're classy. They're sassy, classy tassels. Okay. We'll just stop there. <laughs> or I'll go. I'll keep going making new, uh, new songs up. Anyway, so breaking out of your own mindset as far as what you like and what will sell because there are all kinds of people, all kinds of tastes, all kinds of styles in this world. And just because you won't wear it doesn't mean somebody else wouldn't wear it also. So this is kind of similar. And I see this in uh, the group a lot. I have a group, Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers, is that sometimes people will get caught up in trying to decide if they should list something or not. Like, I don't know if I should list this. I'm not sure, you know. And, and I've been there too, but I think just, you know, it's just jewelry, just list it and see what happens, right? This is part of the learning process. So, you know, it's just jewelry. So I think sometimes we get too much in our own heads and try to figure out like, is this going to sell? Is it worth my time? By the time you've spent all this time debating it, you could have listed it and possibly even sold it. So trying to get out of your own head and just, you know, list it already. The next thing I despise when I am listing jewelry is finding flaws when I'm taking photographs. Now, it doesn't matter on some items, let's say like some vintage enamel brooches that maybe have some scuffs in the enamel, it wouldn't matter as much. But sometimes with some jewelry, the damage can affect the value a lot. And so sometimes that bugs me when I'm, you know, listing a, a cool brooch and then suddenly I realize there's a few stones missing. Well, I wouldn't have noticed it before. I don't know. But it happens, right? Maybe they fell out somewhere while I was, I don't know, storing it. And, but finding flaws when I get to that point and then I'm like, oh, darn it. Now, that's a whole, like a story for a whole other time. But there, I mean, some jewelry you can totally list. And it has flaws. I have one right here. Hang on. I'll show you. Like this brooch. I mean, it's super cool, vintage, this flower. But as you can see, there are some definite flaws to the to the brooch. But I would still list that. Now, if it was a more contemporary brooch, I might not. If it had that kind of wear to the finish. So it just, but that also may be something that's like, well, that's just on you, Margaret. I would list it. 
it's totally subjective, right? <laughs> so the next thing I worry about, not as much as I used to, but I see it still a lot in a, a other jewelry sellers, especially in the group, is worrying that you'll list the, the piece of jewelry with the wrong stone or the wrong name for the style or the wrong, not getting exactly right as far as the name and the style and all this. And the... It's, it's troublesome, true, because if somebody buys it and they're like, hey, wait a minute, this is not what you said it was, uh, that can be a problem. But I think as long as you're putting in the description that this is, you know, you believe that this is what it is, but it could be something else to kind of cover yourself. I did that a lot more when I was first starting until I slowly started learning more and more about the different stones and the different styles and settings then that became less of a, an issue. And then going in, you know, asking the group like, hey, you know, I think this is what this is, but I could use some other keywords, help me out. And you slowly start learning more and more about it. Uh, so yeah, that is something that I can see as a roadblock for myself or a lot of people. But I think as long as I said, just putting in that caveat into the description saying, I did my best, you know, basically, in better words than that. I did my best. This is why I believe it to be take it or leave it, you know. If only we could just put that. This is it. This is what I think it is. Take it or leave it, <laughs> right? If only that would work. <laughs> so the next thing that, again, doesn't bother me as much as it used to, was trying to figure out if something was vintage. If it's not marked and it doesn't have a name or a brand name and you want to list it on eBay and Etsy because Etsy has to be vintage, right? And you don't know, like, when was it made? And you go down this rabbit hole trying to figure out if the piece is vintage. Um, that's something that used to happen to me a lot. Now, I love going down the rabbit hole and doing the research. I, I Don't get me wrong. But then I kick myself later at the time I spend doing that on a piece that may be worth $15, $20. I think now what I generally do is I look at the piece and say, could this have been made 20 years ago? Is this something I would have seen shopping 20 years ago? If the answer is yes, then I feel comfortable listing it as vintage. If it's something that I feel like I could go into Charming Charlie and get next week, then even though maybe it probably could have been made 20 years ago, I'd probably just not put it as vintage, just as a precaution. And that's the way I do it. If you have a different method, I would love to hear it. <laughs> the next thing, it's not a hate really. I mean, it's not a problem if you love it, right? Is that you can't keep it all. I find so many cool pieces that I want to keep. And I end up doing, as you guys know, catch and release, where I'll catch things, I'll hold on to it for a while, and then I'll see it, wear it. If I don't wear it in a while, then I release it, and then I'll go sell it. But I have a ton of catch and release, and I keep finding stuff I want to catch and hold on to. So that's the hard part. Uh, so I'm going to show these cameos that I got, cameo and garnet set I got at this garage sale. The next thing that really bugs me about jewelry is the feeling of competition by some other jewelry sellers. And this may be a taboo subject, but there are, and you've probably been to garage sales or estate sales, thrift stores, where people will just like body block the jewelry and not let anybody else look at it or like turn and like get their back to you so you can't see you know and it's just like that feeling of um mine you know it, it just takes all the fun and joy out of it i have a little clip that i'm going to share i was at a thrift store and I actually was joking because i thought the person was with our group we went to this thrift store it was with with the um, green room reselling meetup in july it was a big group a big bunch of us and I, one person had grabbed all these jewelry bags and was like body blocking it, like my food, um, at the jewelry counter. And I thought the person was with us, but it turns out they weren't. <laughs> but I was making jokes about like, whoa, this is what happens when you don't get here fast enough, you know? And I didn't show the, I don't show the person's face, but they were like looking at me like, what are you, who, what? Um, not, not very pleasant, but that feeling of like, this is all mine. And I get the, I get the like thrill of the hunt, but then there's also that like, come on, man, don't be like that. 
This is when you come too late. <laughs> So yeah, um, just I don't know that that bugs me because there's always there's always more out there. There's always more, and I know I'm probably going to hear this from a comment about it being someone's livelihood. Well, it's all of our livelihoods that are doing this. You know, we're all well, most of us that are watching now are finding jewelry to flip. So I don't know, just be considerate of your fellow jewelry lovers. The next thing that I don't really like a lot about selling jewelry is when it comes to selling lots, staging those lots because they take so long for me. And I know, again, this is totally subjective. Some people probably love it. And they, I mean, I see some that look amazing. The, the pictures look so amazing. And when I did it, it just took me so long <laughs> to do. I'll share a picture of one I did with pearls. It, it looks like it didn't take that long, but it took a long time to make it look like balanced and everything. And then another one that I did of just kind of a junk lot of jewelry. The picture of the jewelry looks really cool because it took a long time to kind of make it look balanced and equaled out in color and size and shit and blah, blah, whatever. Uh, but then the lot ended up selling for like nine bucks. I was like, this was not really worth my time to, to do it like that. <sighs> I don't know. Again, it's one of those things that with practice, I would probably get better. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll try again. And then one more thing that's a struggle is that when you go out and sometimes you'll hit the jackpot, the mother load, and you just can't buy it all. So we had evacuated for a hurricane and we were in a Goodwill in Plano and there were all the jewelry jars in the world. I mean, there must have been 20, 25 jewelry jars and they were like 15 bucks a pop. But at the time, I couldn't afford to buy all of these jars. So I was just, I sort of went into jewelry overload trying to figure out like, okay, how many can I buy? Which ones should I buy? How angry is the manager going to be when he finds out that I'm going to want to look at all of these? I think ultimately I ended up buying eight of them. I bought, I bought quite a few, but I couldn't buy them all. But you know what? That means there were some left for other people. And the last little tidbit I'm going to leave y'all with is selling things for a high price and just trusting your gut because that was something uh, it's hard to do. It's it's a struggle sometimes when you you want to you see a piece that you've got and you really think it's something special. You maybe you can't find anything quite like it, or there are similar ones, but it's not as nice. And then putting it at a high price and just trusting your instincts. And it's so hard and it's frustrating sometimes because you'll get lowball offers or offers you think are not worth it, and it's tempting to take it. But just trusting that you can end up getting these really high prices for some of these pieces. So I'm sharing a Zuni owl brooch that I picked up for, I think, eight bucks. It was half off at a estate sale. And then it ended up selling for $115. And then this really cool money clip that I got for just a few bucks. It's sold for almost $150. Bucks. I just put it up and I just trusted my instincts. But it, it was nerve-wracking waiting and just thinking did I make a mistake here uh, but no and they ended up selling <laughs> I would love to hear from you what are some of the things that frustrate you confound you irritate you make you angry things that you don't like about selling jewelry or areas that you feel like you want to improve in because any of these areas well aside from controlling other people, are things that I have complete control over learning and doing better with if I chose to. And <laughs> I'm gonna put a picture here of pancake in my photo tent because that's the last little snippet of things that frustrate me, as cute as it is. I know I've got some clean out to do when I route that cat out of my photo tent. Thanks so much for coming to watch. I will see you on the next one. Bye.